Hello South Hilton, welcome back to the final part of the twists. The furniture goes up. Now the table, the big table, shouted Mugglewump. Turn the table upside down and put a dollop of sticky glue onto the bottom of each leg. Then we shall stick that on the ceiling as well. Hoisting the huge table upside down onto the ceiling was not an easy job, but they managed it in the end. Will it stay there? they cried. Is the glue strong enough to hold it up? It's the strongest glue in the world, Mugglewump replied. It's the special bird-catching, bird-killing glue for smearing on trees. Please, said the roly-poly bird, I have asked you not before not to mention that subject. How would you like it if it was monkey pie they made every Wednesday and all your friends had been boiled up and I went on talking about it? I do beg your pardon, pardon said Mugglebump. I'm so excited I hardly know what I'm saying. Now the chairs. Do the same with the chairs. All the chairs must be stuck upside down to the ceiling and in their right places. Oh, do hurry up, everybody. Any moment now, those two filthy freaks are going to come rushing in with their guns. The monkeys, with the birds helping them, put glue onto the bottom of each chair leg and hoisted them up onto the ceiling. Now the smaller tables, shouted Mugglebump, and the big sofa and the sideboard and the lamps and all the tiny little things, the ashtrays, the ornaments and that beastly plastic gnome on the sideboard. Everything, absolutely everything, must be stuck to the ceiling. It was terribly hard work. It was especially difficult to stick everything to the ceiling in exactly the right place, but they got it done in the end. What now? asked the roly-poly bird. He was out of breath and so tired he could hardly flap his wings. Now the pictures, cried Mugglewump. Turn all the pictures upside down. And will one of your birds please fly out onto the road and watch to see when those frumptious freaks are coming back? I'll go, said the roly-poly bird. I'll sit on the telephone wires and keep guard. It'll give me a rest. The ravens swoop over. They'd only just finished the job when the roly-poly bird came swooping in, screaming, They're coming back! They're coming back! Quickly, the birds flew back onto the roof of the house. The monkeys rushed into their cage and stood upside down, one on top of the other. A moment later, Mr and Mrs Twit came marching into the garden, each carrying a fearsome-looking gun. I'm glad to see those monkeys are still upside down, said Mr Twit. They're too stupid to do anything else, said Mrs Twit. Here, look at all those cheeky birds, still up there on the roof. Let's go inside and load our lovely new guns, and then it'll be bang, 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 and bird pie for supper. Just as Mr and Mrs Twit were about to enter the house, two black ravens swooped low over their heads. Each bird carried a paintbrush in its claw, and each paintbrush was smeared with sticky glue. As the ravens whizzed over, they brushed a stick, streak of sticky glue onto the tops of Mr and Mrs Twit's heads. They did it with the lightest touch, but even so the Twits both felt it. What was that? cried Mrs Twit. Something... Some beastly bird has dropped his dirty droppings on my head. On mine too, shouted Mr Twit. I felt it. Don't touch it, cried Mrs Twit. You'll get it all over your hands. Come inside and we'll wash it off at the sink. The filthy dirty brutes, yelled Mr Twit. I'll bet they did it on purpose. Just wait till I've loaded up my gun. Mrs Twit got the key from under the doormat, where Mugglewump had carefully replaced it, and into the house they went. The twits are turned upside down. What's this? gasped Mr Twit as they entered the living room. What's happened? screamed Mrs Twit. They all stood in the middle of the room looking up. All the furniture, the big table, the chairs, the sofa, the lamps, the little side tables, the cabinet with bottles of beer in it, the ornaments, the electric fire, the carpet, everything was stuck upside down to the ceiling. The pictures were upside down on the walls, and the floor they were standing on was absolutely bare. What more? It had been painted white to look like the ceiling. Look! screamed Mrs Twit. That's the floor! The floor's up there! This is the ceiling! We are standing on the ceiling! We're upside down! gasped Mr Twit. We must be upside down. We are standing on the ceiling looking down at the floor. Oh, help! screamed Mrs Twit. Help! Help! I'm beginning to feel too giddy. 
So am I, so am I, cried Mr. Twit. I don't like this one little bit. We're upside down and all the blood's going to my head, screamed Mrs. Twit. If we don't do something quickly, I shall die. I know I will. I've got it, cried Mr. Twit. I know what we'll do. We'll stand on our heads, then anyway we'll be the right way up. So they stood on their heads, and of course, the moment the tops of their heads touched the floor, the sticky glue that the ravens had brushed on a few minutes before did its job. They were stuck. They were pinned down, cemented, glued, fixed to the floorboards. Through a crack in the door, the monkeys watched. They jumped right out of their cage the moment the twits had gone inside. And the roly-poly bird watched. And all the other birds flew in and out to catch a glimpse of this extraordinary sight. The monkeys escape. That evening, Mugglebump and his family went up to the big wood on top of the hill and in the tallest tree of all, they built a marvellous tree house. All the birds, especially the big ones, the crows and rooks and magpies, made their nests around the tree house so that nobody could see it from the ground. You can't stay up for here forever, you know, the roly-poly bird said. Why not? asked Mugglewump. It's a lovely place. Just you wait till the winter comes, the roly-poly bird said. Monkeys don't like cold weather, do they? They most certainly don't cried Mugglebump. Are oh, the winters so very cold over here? It's all snow and ice, said the roly-poly bird. Sometimes it's so cold a bird will wake up in the morning with his feet frozen to the bough that he's been roosting on. Then what shall we do? cried Mugglewump. My family will all be deep freezed. No, they won't, said the roly-poly bird, because when the first leaves start falling from the trees in the autumn, you can all fly home to Africa with me. Don't be ridiculous, Mugglebump said. Monkeys can't fly. You can sit on my back, said the roly-poly bird. I shall take you one at a time. You will travel by the roly-poly superjet and it won't cost you a penny. The Twits get the shrinks. And down here in the horrid house, Mr and Mrs Twit are still stuck upside down to the floor of the living room. It's all your fault, yelled Mr Twit, thrashing his legs in the air. You're the one, you ugly old cow, who went hopping around shouting, We're upside down, we're upside down. And you're the one who said to stand on our heads so that we'd be the right way up, you whiskery old warthog, screamed Mrs Twit. Now we'll never get free, we're stuck here forever. You may be stuck here forever, said Mr Twit, but not me, I'm going to get away. Mr Twit wriggled and squirmed and he squiggled and wormed and he twisted and turned and he choggled and churned, but the sticky glue held him to the floor just as tightly as it had once held the poor birds in the big dead tree. He was still as upside down as ever, standing on his heads. But heads are not made to be stood upon. If you stand on your head for a very long time, a horrid thing happens, and this was where Mr Twit got his biggest shock of all. With so much weight on it from up above, his head began to get squashed into his body. Quite soon it disappeared completely, sunk out of sight into the fatty folds of his flabby neck. I'm shrinking, burbled Mr Twit. So am I, cried Mrs Twit. Help me, save me, call the doctor, yelled Mr Twit. I'm getting the dreaded shrinks. And so he was. Mrs Twit was getting the dreaded shrinks too. And this time it wasn't a fake, it was the real thing. Their heads shrank into their necks. Then their bodies began shrinking into their bodies. And their bodies began shrinking into their legs. And their legs began shrinking into their feet. And one week later, on a nice sunny afternoon, a man called Fred came round to read the gas meter. When nobody answered the door, Fred peeped into the house and there he saw on the floor of the living room two bundles of old clothes, two pairs of shoes and a walking stick. There was nothing let more in the world left of Mr and Mrs Twit. And everyone, including Fred, shouted, Hooray! Well, that's the end of the nasty old pair of the twits. We hope you enjoyed the story. <laughs>